Thanks to Skillshare for supporting my channel. While advancements in machine learning, specifically deep learning, have allowed us to create models that can perform increasingly well on increasingly complex tasks, the increasing size and complexity of these models makes it difficult for us to understand how models arrive at their predictions and when they're going wrong or worse, going rogue. But what if we could open up these black box machine learning models and translate the contents into something that we humans can understand? This is called explainable AI and there's actually actually been a ton of research over the past several years focusing on how to explain different types of models. However, with the rise of explainable AI has come an important question. What does it mean to explain a machine learning model? We'll answer that question later on in the video, but before we get too deep into things, I wanted to explain one quick channel change. Instead of uploading on Fridays, you're going to be getting new videos on Mondays. This change will help me make better videos for you and upload them at a reasonable hour, while also taking some stress off of my Fridays since I have a lot of other deadlines that tend to coincide with posting day. The schedule change will start on this coming Monday, September 28th, so stay tuned for that. And that also happens to be the day that the September Nebula Journal Club will launch. So if you have a Nebula subscription, you should check that out too. Also, you might want to watch The Social Dilemma between now and Monday if you haven't already. All right, back to the video. So why do we want to be able to explain how models make decisions in the first place? There's a lot of different reasons that I could point to, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to trust. Trust that models are making the correct decisions under the correct assumptions, trust that we can tell what happened when a model fails, and trust that when we deploy models at large scale to be used by millions of people, that the predictions being made are in line with our expectations. And it's hard to trust a system when you don't know anything about how it works on the inside. In fact, even if we learn via explainability that a model performs poorly on certain types of data, that already gives us more control over the model itself because we can know to either improve the model based on that knowledge or not use the model for those types of tasks. From a basic science perspective, explainability can actually help us gain new insights into the task itself. For example, if we were able to figure out how models like AlphaGo are so much better at the game Go than humans, we might be able to develop new strategies that humans could execute. Similarly, if we were able to explain a model that was trained for cancer diagnostics, we might gain more insight into how cancer grows and spreads within our bodies, which might lead to new treatments. More broadly, as we develop machine learning models that make increasingly important decisions for us, it's unlikely that people will use them if they don't trust them. For example, healthcare decisions need to be traceable, both to justify a certain diagnosis or treatment plan, but also to be able to figure out what went wrong if a diagnosis or treatment plan turns out to be incorrect. This is why new medical technologies and treatments tend to go through a fairly rigorous process of study and approvals before they can be implemented in the clinic. And that presents a problem for medical AI because we can't necessarily explain what's happening inside the black box that is the algorithm. Given that many other fields are similarly highly regulated, explainability can help developers comply with those regulations and may help us advance new machine learning systems into those fields. So clearly explainability is useful, but how do you explain a deep neural network in the first place? It turns out there are two overarching approaches. First, analyzing a black box model and visualizing the results in some way. And second, using models that are designed to be inherently interpretable. The former approach of analyzing black box models includes a lot of different approaches to actually doing the analysis. If you want to explain how the model performs on average, you might take a high level look at a black box model and impose certain constraints to see how well the model performs. Alternatively, you might be interested in how a model analyzes specific pixels in an image, at which point you might take a low level a look at a model and analyze how it responds to specific features or a specific example. For example, this paper creates heat maps that could be overlaid onto an input image to see which pixels were most important to the model in making its final decision. The challenge to this approach, however, is that knowing which pixels are important doesn't necessarily tell you that much about the underlying hardware or formula in this case. And it also depends on how you define important. In some cases, you may want to explain a model that you don't have access to in the first place. This is a common issue with proprietary algorithms, such as the facial recognition systems developed by IBM, Microsoft, and Amazon. And in this case, a common workaround is to create an interpretable model that produces similar results to the black box model given the same input. For example, the Machine Bias article from ProPublica did this to analyze the Compass recidivism prediction algorithm and uncover its racial bias against people of color because the Compass algorithm is proprietary. Now, if you don't want to make a black box in the first place, you can instead focus on creating interpretable models. And a lot of really interesting and creative model designs have come from that. For example, this paper focuses on an interpretable model that is made up 
of individual neural networks for each feature and adds the outputs together at the end to create a prediction, allowing you to directly interpret the impact of each feature. However, if we can create things like heat maps or analogous explanations for other types of data, then why do we need interpretable models? In other words, if we can interpret black box algorithms, why do we need to develop algorithms that aren't black boxes? This comes down to an issue of translation. Researchers have argued that it's impossible to create a truly correct explanation that captures the entire complex formula. This means that in making the explanation, some of the information about how the model makes decisions is either lost or inherently incorrect. In fact, even if we make interpretable models that produce similar results to the black box model, the processes through which these two different models come to that conclusion are different. And so the interpretable model doesn't really explain the black box decision. In fact, case studies on fairness and bias and algorithms are actually a really interesting example of this because we explain the model bias as being due to race, gender, or whatever other factor we're seeing, but the model never sees any race or gender data. That means that that explanation is technically wrong, even if it is correct that the race or gender bias is inherent in the data itself. This is also why mitigating bias in models is so hard because there isn't usually a clear thing that we can change that will remove that bias. So if we can make interpretable models, then why bother with deep neural networks? Well, mostly because they're a lot easier to work with. Interpretable models are often hard to construct, both because what it means for a model to be interpretable depends on the type of task that you're trying to do, and also because the models themselves are usually computationally complex. However, there has been a recent push in the machine learning community to try to develop interpretable models first before going back to deep neural networks, both so that we can better understand the models that we're building, but also to broaden the field of interpretable machine learning. I'll also say that when it comes to practical use of machine learning models, explainability and interpretability are only one part of actually communicating how models work to people. In fact, a lot of the creativity that I've seen go into explainable machine learning isn't necessarily in deciphering the model, it's in finding a way to communicate the information to the public in an interesting and engaging way. This might include anything from user interface development to graphic design to illustration, kind of like what this paper did. If this kind of creativity sounds interesting to you, but you don't know where to start, you can start your creative journey by checking out Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey for less than $10 a month. They offer thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. I'm currently taking Penny Lane's class on filmmaking from home because I'm filmmaking from home and it's been really interesting to see how I can use old clips to create new and interesting videos. In fact, I'm actually working on a bit of a secret project right now, so perhaps when that's done I'll show you guys a sneak peek of it. Skillshare members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. And most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule. If you're interested, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so that you can explore your creativity. Clicking on that link supports my channel and will give you a head start on your creative journey, so check out Skillshare and show me what you make! Otherwise, if you like this video, you can let me know by smashing the like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also check out my AI 101 playlist to learn more about machine learning models and how they make decisions. Otherwise, you can follow my PhD life on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll see y'all on Monday. Bye!